Starting off at number 10 is the Old Washu Club. What was once a high class bar reserved for the wealthiest men in Virginia City, Nevada, is now one of the most haunted places in the state. You see, as the riches dwindled, so did the clientele that began to roam around. And soon enough, anyone with cash for a beer was welcome inside the saloon. And it didn't take long before the bar became a frequent hotspot visited by Johns looking for a cheap night of fun away from their wives. However, along with the new nightlife, the new patrons also brought lots of violence, with bar fights becoming a near nightly incident. The next thing you know, bar fights turned into fights with the working ladies. These women were being killed by the patrons if they wouldn't give them what they wanted. Today, the building is mostly used for commercial properties, but many ghosts have been reported haunting the once wealthy halls, especially the ghost of Lena. Legend has it that Lena was once one of the girls working in the bedrooms back in the day, and tragically she was killed by one of the Johns on the third floor. But she's not the only ghost who roams the halls, as allegedly the man who killed Lena felt such guilt over what he did that he took his own life the very next day on the second floor. To this day, his ghost is seen walking around looking for Lena and sometimes even crying out her name. Next up at number 9, the Clown Motel. There are a few things that rival my fear of dolls, but if there is one thing that comes close, it would probably be clowns. So a motel that's entire theme and brand is that it's filled head to toe with clowns actually sounds like my nightmare. I mean, how do people sleep in a room where creepy clown paintings and figurines stare at them in the dark? I will never understand. But to make matters even worse, it's not just filled with freaky and terrifying clowns. I mean, truly, that would be enough for me. But this place doubles down as a haunted motel as well. Long before the clown-filled motel opened its doors, this corner of town was reserved for the local graveyard. Being the Wild West and all, between the mining incidents and just general dangerous lifestyles, in about 10 years the cemetery was filled to capacity with 300 corpses. And it seems the spirits of these lost souls like to roam around the nearby hotel, terrifying guests as if clowns weren't getting the job done already. Patrons of the motel today frequently report seeing strange occurrences around the motel, such as hearing strange voices or doors slamming shut seemingly out of nowhere. So unless you are a clown loving ghost enthusiast with a glutton for punishment, then I would suggest looking for a different place to stay on your visit. Coming in at number 8, the Pioneer Saloon. Opened in 1913, the Pioneer Saloon is the oldest bar in southern Nevada, and oh boy does it have a history. In its heyday, the saloon was no stranger to a bar fight, and as a result there are quite a few bullet holes lining the walls. But that is not the worst of it. It said American actor Clark Gable frequented this establishment and was here waiting for Carol Lombard the night that a search party went out looking for her after a nearby plane crash. But the most tragic story is that of the bartender, who's said to have taken his own life right before a full house of patrons. As a result, many have said that the Pioneer Saloon is home to a whole mess of spirits. Of course, most famously the bartender, but also an entity referred to as Ruby and even the ghost of Carol Lombard herself. Over the years, many paranormal investigators have popped in hoping to snag a recording of a strange noise or catch an unusual sighting on video, and believe it or not, they all claim to have been successful. But it's not just the experts. Patrons of the bar too claim to see doors slam shut or hear gunshots at night. But nothing is as scary as the apparition of the lonely bartender who's said to terrify even the most skeptical guests who visit. Coming in at number 7, Yellow Jack. Jacket Mine. Widely believed to be the most haunted place across Nevada, this terrifying mine got its claim to fame over 150 years ago. Back in 1869, during the early hours of the morning, a huge fire broke out inside the mine, spreading up to the 800 foot level. Completely unaware, the day crew began their work day descending into the mine, and soon burning timbers started collapsing around them, trapping them inside. Despite fire firefighters arriving on the scene, the water pressure wasn't strong enough to extinguish the fire, and so the blaze
blaze continued for the next three weeks. Tragically, 39 miners lost their lives inside, but the strange thing is that only 34 bodies were ever recovered. Many over the years have wondered where the remains of the missing miners have gone, but one thing is for sure, all the men's spirits have stayed behind to haunt any who step foot on the property. Today, while you can't enter the mine itself, those that visit the area have reported seeing blue and white orbs floating around the main entrance. But most frightening of all are the screams and cries that can be heard echoing from the tunnels below. Coming in at number 6. Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. It may be a popular tourist attraction for Las Vegas visitors, but that doesn't mean it's not also a terrifyingly haunted museum. If you don't already know, Zach Baggins was once one of America's most famous TV ghost hunters and spent years collecting some of the most creepy, evil, and possessed trinkets this world has to offer. So what's an ex-ghost hunter to do with all his haunted memorabilia? Why make a haunted museum, of course. If you dare visit the museum today, you'll find the items encased in glass and behind velvet ropes to keep you from touching them. But that doesn't stop the frightening spirits that haunt them from freaking out the patrons anyways. Inside the museum are 30 rooms, each filled with cursed items and riddled with haunted spirits, such as haunted dolls, a cursed rocking chair that is believed to be the inspiration behind the actual haunting in the movie The Conjuring, and the original Die Book Box. The Die Book Box, for those that are not aware, is believed to be the most haunted object on the planet. The Die Book originates from Jewish folklore and is an evil entity that will possess the living and never leave. And as the legend goes, you are never to open the Die Book Box, otherwise the entity will escape and wreak havoc on anyone in its path. Coming in at number 5, the Hoover Dam. This popular tourist destination spanning the Colorado River between Arizona and Nevada is revered as a spectacular feat of engineering. The construction on this behemoth began back in 1931 and it took 5 years to complete. But make no mistake, the history of this dam is not a squeaky clean slate. In fact, it's said that a whopping 112 people died during its construction and that each and every one one of them haunts the dam to this day. And if that wasn't dark enough, rumor has it that some of the workers who fell to their deaths were actually permanently encased in the dam's concrete. While the concrete may encase their physical bodies, their spirits are said to roam the grounds, terrifying anyone who they come into contact with. Many believe the spirits are angry to have lost their lives to the project and are there to take revenge on those who reap the benefits they never got to. Visitors and staff alike have reported cold spots, flickering electricity, equipment malfunctions, and finding missing items turn up in completely inexplicable places as soon as they are on the property. So just be careful if you ever decide to stop on by, you never know what could happen. Next up at number 4, the Overland Hotel and Saloon. Back in the day, the county of Pioche was a near lawless pit filled with danger and bloodshed. Over the years, it's said 72 souls were laid to rest across the county and it's believed they all remain haunting the grounds to this day. Nicknamed Nevada's liveliest go town, Pioche might have a tamer facade during the day, but at night it's just as wild as it was back in the day. But the most terrifying spot of them all is said to be the Overland Hotel and Saloon. Although the Overland that stands today was rebuilt after a tragic fire in 1948, the spirits that haunt the grounds were not not deterred. In fact, some say they even came back with a vengeance. So much so that a few years back, a crew for the TV show Ghost Adventures decided to try their hand and check out the rumors for themselves, and as they tell it, they recorded some of the most successful interactions with spirits at this hotel than anywhere else to date. To be clear, successful for a paranormal investigator pretty much translates to a thing of nightmares for anyone else. To top it off, guests continuously report witnessing shadowy figures lurking in the corners and slamming doors. And some guests even say they've been physically shaken by spirits until they awake. In fact, this place is so haunted that staff say you need to tell them if you want to avoid ghosts, as there are only a few select rooms 
things that the spirits tend to stay away from. That being said, you are never truly safe from their presence. Coming in at number three, the Silver Queen Hotel. Built back in 1876, the Silver Queen is just about the oldest hotel in the state, and not much has changed since the days it opened its doors. Beautifully restored to maintain its 19th century authenticity, it's not just the brass hardware that has stayed since the early days, but some of the patrons too. The most famous of which is the ghost of Rosie, believed to be the spirit of a woman of the night who was a frequent and favorite patron of the Silver Queen Hotel in its heyday, but who tragically took her own life in the very hotel she worked in. As the story goes, a few of her clients became violent towards her, and Rosie, depressed and seeing no way out of this life, decided to end it herself in her bathtub of room 11. To this day, it's said room 11 is haunted by her ghost, and those that have stayed there say they routinely hear rattling doorknobs, phantom footsteps, and disembodied voices echo throughout. But she isn't alone. Other frightening ghosts have also made their appearance in the wedding chapel's night cameras, and visitors swear to hear footsteps that sound like clacking along a wooden floor, despite that the hallways are carpeted. I mean, it's just creepy from top to bottom. Next up in our number two spot, the Goldfield Hotel. Although it now stands abandoned and boarded up, back in 1908 it was one of the hottest hotels in town, and it certainly has a spicy legend. As the story goes, back in the day there was a young woman named Elizabeth who caught the eye of owner George Wingfield. George became quite smitten with the lady and frequently swung by her room for a nighttime visit. However, Elizabeth soon fell pregnant and George Concerned for his reputation and business, lured her into room 109 at the hotel under false pretenses. Once inside, he chained Elizabeth to the radiator and forced her to stay in the room alone until she gave birth. But tragically, Elizabeth died in the room, and so George took it upon himself to deal with her. And so George took it upon himself to deal with her situation, allegedly throwing it down a nearby mine shaft. Those who pass by the old hotel today say they can hear the sound of chains clanking against the radiator and that Elizabeth can be seen walking around room 109 wearing a long white dress and weeping. Some even say they have heard her cries echo in the streets. But it's not just the weeping Elizabeth that haunts these evil halls, but the spirit of a former employee who took their life as well as George himself. It's believed George remains there tormenting the poor Elizabeth even in her death, making this place more and more evil as the hours go by. And last up in our number one spot is Circus Circus. Since its opening in 1968, Circus Circus has become one of the most famous hotel and casinos in Las Vegas. Over the years, it has of course been the meeting place of countless guests, but it has also been the location of a multitude of crimes, including multiple brutal killings. Most notorious is the tragic case of a mother and son who were found dead in room 123 in what appeared to be a brutal case of the mother taking his life and then her own. No one knows what led the mother to do such a thing, but it's said the pair frequently wander the hotel, and at night the loud screams are often heard echoing throughout the hall. Most terrifying though are the reports of people who have stayed in the room, as apparently the words help me have appeared on numerous occasions scrawled across the bathroom mirror. But it wasn't just brutal killings among family members that went down in these hallowed halls. Believe it or not, there was also apparently a deep affiliation with the American mobster Anthony John Spilotro, who was put in charge of the gift shop to cover for his illegal business dealings. As you can imagine, with mobsters frequenting the establishment, there was quite a lot of bloodshed going on in the shadows, and so many of the other ghosts are suspected to have been the victims of Spilotro and his men. However, some even believe Spilotro himself, who was brutally killed by his employer, haunts the halls hoping to get revenge on the very people who put him in the grave 
all those years ago. Number 9. La Palaza Mansion The La Palaza Mansion is a now abandoned, allegedly haunted mansion in Las Vegas that was once home to a notorious mobster known as Tony the Ants Belotra. Over the years, there has been a score of rumors and hearsay out of the Palaza Mansion as to what kind of violence has happened inside those walls and inside the secret tunnels that are built underneath it, as well as the secret rooms around. It makes a good like a sense that a place where mobsters would meet and greet probably saw its fair share of dark dealings. Various inhabitants over the years have complained of spirits on multiple occasions. One particularly vivid story details someone being choked after a glass of wine exploded mysteriously. As well, female guests have reported hearing hooting and hollering while showering at the Palazzo Mansion. Pervert ghosts. Yeah, learn something every day. The mansion is closed, but it recently went up for sale again, but it's been struggling to find a buyer. I guess no one really wants to buy a home where you know a ghost is gonna be watching you use the loofah. Number eight, the Flamingo Resort. The Flamingo was the prized property and hotel of Bugsy Siegel, the legendary New York mobster who was the undisputed first king of Las Vegas, as he was influential and key to the development of the Las Vegas Strip, becoming the beloved den of sin that we know today. Unfortunately for Bugsy, he didn't get to enjoy his time with his precious flamingo very long, as he was assassinated by a rifle in his own home six months after its grand opening. Well, if you believe the rumors, maybe Bugsy keeps finding his way back to his favorite spot as there are reports of all sorts of sightings of that checkered coat. Fun little aside, a little trivia for some of the gamers out there. The villain of Fallout New Vegas, Benny, was directly based on Bugsy, down to the trademark jacket. Anyway, guests of the Flamingo Hotel have reported hearing strange whisperings at night during their rooms and claim that spectral apparitions have been seen in the presidential suite, Bugsy's old personal room in the hotel. There have been reports of seeing the notorious criminal in the garden as well as the chapel. Perhaps he's still got unfinished hotel business to take care of. Or Maybe he just loves that spot so much he can't move. Number six, the Mob Museum. Hey, uh, there, there ain't nothing to see here. Move along, move along at this one. There's nothing to see at point number six. Well, actually there is quite a lot. The Mob Museum is a showcase to the people that made Las Vegas what it is today. Gangsters, crooks, criminals and all. The museum serves as a monument to all things crooked and corrupt and is built in the old Las Vegas courthouse where several of the people who are featured in the museum receive the sentence that would change their lives, so to speak. As well, one of the most prominent features of the museum is a swath of the brick wall from the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, still riddled with bullet holes from the infamous bloody class. Employees who work at the Mob Museum claim that in their time, it's not uncommon to see shadowy figures wandering through at night, quite possibly the lost souls of old mobsters who never got a peaceful rest, probably due to, you know, being perforated by bullets. Number 5. The Luxor Resort The Luxor Resort has been host to paranormal rumors pretty much since it was constructed. Maybe it's because it was built to look like an ancient Egyptian tomb. Maybe it's the gigantic black pyramid with a giant light atop its peak that looks like it's a dark temple that's attracting all of the malevolent energy in the world inside the Luxor. Could be that. An unknown number of construction workers died during its construction. And shortly after its opening, two guests jumped from the balconies. You should know too as well. The Luxor is also home to a massive collection of artifacts recovered from the wreck of the Titanic, all the way up to a giant piece of the bulkhead complete with a piece of the window. You gotta imagine if there wasn't already enough evil energy inside that building, bringing in a bunch of relics from the Titanic has gotta push it overboard. No pun intended, wow. Employees have reported that deceased passengers from the Titanic came with their relics, appearing, disappearing, and making their presence known. Some rooms in the resort are even modeled directly after rooms in the Titanic, where people report increased spirit spiritual activity. Maybe they feel at home. Number 4. Fox Ridge Park You know, it's not all glitz and grime all the time in Las Vegas. There still has to be a community, you know? The people have to live somewhere. Can't all just be wall-to-wall -wall casinos. There has to be room for grocery stores and places for people to play. Perhaps once you've had your fill of shooting craps, you can take a walk down to Fox Ridge Park, a small little playground in Henderson, the city that neighbors Las Vegas. The story goes that a long time past, a boy was run over by the park, and his soul has been bound to it ever since. People report seeing the swing set moving when no one's around or no wind could be blowing it, and even outright saying that they see spectral apparitions. He's apparently very angry, however, and I never quite got over his condition. And it's been said that he takes the form of a demonic entity or some monstrous specter to would-be paranormal investigators who go and disturb him. So it might be best to leave this one to the pros and check out some of the other stuff on the list. Tell Zach Baggins about this one. Number three, Rhyolite Ghost Town. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but we'll go through 
through it anyway. After you've made a day seeing the sights of Las Vegas, consider taking a road trip outside of the strip to Rhyolite, an abandoned ghost town just outside. It used to be a prospering mining community during the gold rush, but was abandoned altogether in the panic of 1907. It still stands now as a monument to an America long gone, a town frozen in amber, perfectly preserved. Even just looking at it, pictures of it is kind of giving me the willies, you know? You look at it and it feels like things should be moving and bustling, but instead it's just a graveyard. You can wander around the remnants of the old town, seeing the desolate ruins of a bank and a jail. Because of its eerie, abandoned nature, it's a very popular spot for paranormal enthusiasts to scout out to try and see if maybe, just maybe, they can catch a bona fide ghostly gunslinger or vanquished varmint still wandering around on this mortal coil. And finally, the number one most haunted spot in Vegas is Bali's Las Vegas Resort. In 1980, a raging fire scorched the tower of the original MGM Grand Resort. It was an absolutely dreadful disaster that claimed the lives of 85 people and badly injured many, many more. The building was restored and sold and renamed to Bali's in 1985. But given the building's treacherous backstory, it's no surprise how many guests complain about paranormal experiences there. Guests who stay in the original refurbished tower complain of overwhelming smell of smoke or the sounds of people screaming throughout the night. Others notice that on higher floors, the furniture will move unexpectedly or windows have been shut or even locked that can be found open. It's thought that these are the spirits of those on the higher floors desperate to escape, not knowing they never will. There's a famous ghost in Bali's, residents claim to see, of an old woman who sits at a slot machine on the casino floor, blankly pulling the lever and idly playing calmly until she bursts into flames without making a noise and then vanishing in the blink of an eye. She only appears for seconds at a time, but she's been purportedly seen many, many times. Ugh. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Briavel's Castle in Gloucester. I don't know, if I said that wrong, Remove some letters. I don't know what to tell you. Briavel's castle is a ruined Norman fortress located in the Forest of Dean, and over the years, the castle has been the subject of many haunting tales and ghostly sightings. One of the most famous stories of that is the White Lady who is said to haunt the castle. According to legend, she is the ghost of a woman who was wrongly accused of stealing from the castle and was subsequently executed. Her ghost has been reported to roam the castle's halls and corridors, and she has been seen by many visitors and staff staff members. Another famous ghostly tale from the castle is that of the phantom coach, who is said to drive up to the castle gates before disappearing without a trace. Legend has it that the coach is driven by the ghost of a former owner of the castle who was killed by his own wife and her lover. In addition to these tales, there have also been reports of unexplained noises and strange apparitions throughout the castle. Despite the many stories of ghosts and hauntings, this castle remains a popular tourist destination and a fascinating fascinating piece of British history. Why not head over for a visit? I heard you can even stay in the oubliette. In our number 9 spot today we have the Glasgow Necropolis. This place is exactly what it sounds like. It is a necropolis and what place is more haunted than a necropolis? The Glasgow Necropolis is a Victorian cemetery located on a hill overlooking Glasgow, Scotland. Over the years it has become a popular spot for ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts due to the many haunting tales that surround the site. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with the necropolis is that of a female ghost. According to legend, she is the ghost of a wealthy woman who was buried in a white dress and veil. Her ghost has been seen by many visitors floating among the tombstones and crypts. Another tale involves the ghost of a man who was buried alive. Legend has it that he woke up in his coffin and tried to escape but died before he could make it out. Visitors have reported hearing knocking sounds coming from the ground and feeling cold spots near his grave. At the end of the day, while there are thousands of people buried here, only a small group have graves stones and even fewer have names. This only adds to the eerie nature of the cemetery. There are even rumors that a vampire just might be wandering the grounds looking for its next prey. All in all, this place is full of haunting tales, urban legends, and a whole bunch of spook. In our number 8 spot today, we have Pluckley in Kent. The village of Pluckley, located in the county of Kent, England, is known for being one of the most haunted villages in the entire country. There are numerous ghost stories associated with the village, many of which have been passed down through generations. One of the most famous tales is that of the Screaming Woods, a dense 
forest area on the outskirts of the village. According to legend, the woods are haunted by the ghost of a highwayman who was caught and killed by villagers and his screams can still be heard at night. Another famous ghost story involves the watercress woman, a ghostly figure who is said to appear near a stream in the village carrying a basket of watercress on her arm. It is believed that she drowned in the stream while picking watercress and her ghost has been seen by many villagers over the years. Other reported sightings include ghosts of a monk, a schoolmaster, and even a haunted pub. Despite the spooky tales, Pluckley remains a charming and picturesque village, attracting visitors from around the world. Visit if you dare. In our number 7 spot today, we have Chillingham Castle in Northumberland. Chillingham Castle, located in Northumberland, England, is considered to be one of the most haunted castles in the country. The castle has a dark and mysterious history, and there have been numerous reports of paranormal activity over the years. One of the most famous ghosts associated with the castle is the Blue Boy. According to legend, the ghost is a spirit of a young man who was imprisoned in a room in the castle and left to die. His ghost has been seen by many visitors, appearing as a blue flash of light or as a boy dressed in blue clothing. Another famous tale is that of a specific room in the castle where prisoners were once harmed and then executed. Visitors have reported feeling cold spots, hearing unexplained noises, and even feeling the presence of the ghosts of the tormented prisoners. Other reported sightings include ghosts of a lady in white, a soldier, and even a ghostly cat. In our number 6 spot today, we have Corf Castle. Corf Castle, located in Dorset, England, is a ruined fortress with a rich history and many ghostly tales. The castle was originally built in the 11th century and was destroyed during the English Civil War in the 17th century. One of the most famous ghosts associated with the castle is that of Lady Banks, the wife of the castle's owner during the Civil War. According to legend, she defended the castle against enemy soldiers and was killed during the siege. Her ghost has been seen wandering the castle ruins dressed in a long white gown. Another famous tale is that of the Drummer Boy, a ghostly figure who is said to haunt the castle gatehouse. According to legend, the boy was caught spying on enemy soldiers and this swiftly led to his demise. His ghost has been seen and heard drumming his sticks on the castle walls. As you walk up the steps to the castle, you might also learn about Edward the Martyr, who was set to be king until he also lost his life here at the hands of his own stepmother who wanted her own birth son to be the heir to the throne. Other reported sightings include ghosts of soldiers, knights, and even a headless woman. Didn't see that one coming. In our number 5 spot today, we have Whitby Abbey, North Yorkshire. Whitby Abbey is a ruined gothic abbey located in the seaside town of Whitby, North Yorkshire in England, and upon looking at it, it totally makes sense why people say this was part of the inspiration for Dracula. The abbey has a rich history and has been the subject of many haunting tales over the years. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with the abbey is that of the Whitby Abbey ghost. Of course. According to legend, the ghost is the spirit of a young woman who fell to her death from the abbey's high tower while trying to escape her angry husband. Her ghost has been seen wandering the abbey ruins dressed in a white dress. Ghosts really seem to vibe with white dresses for some reason. Another famous tale is that of the Black Abbot, a ghostly figure who is said to haunt the abbey's grounds. According to legend, the Black Abbot was a former abbot of the monastery who was executed for his crimes. His ghost has been seen wearing a black robe and carrying a book. Other reported sightings include ghosts of monks, nuns, and even a ghostly dog. Despite the many spooky tales, Whitby Abbey remains a popular tourist destination, offering visitors a glimpse into the fascinating history of the Abbey and the paranormal activity associated with it. In our number 4 spot today, we have Glencoe Argyll. Glencoe is a beautiful and rugged valley located in the Argyll region of Scotland and is pretty famous for being one of the settings in the Bond film Skyfall, but it's also famous for its haunting tales. The area is steeped in history and it all starts back in 1692 with what is known as the Massacre of Glencoe. In that year, soldiers loyal to the English crown killed members of the Macdonald clan who had been hosting them as guests. It is said that the ghosts of the lost McDonald's still haunt the valley, seeking revenge on their killers. Another famous tale is that of the Grey Man. 
According to legend, the gray man is a ghostly figure who is set to haunt the summits of the mountains in Glencoe. His ghostly presence has been reported by many climbers and hikers over the years. In our number 3 spot today we have Highgate Cemetery, London. This cemetery is located in London and for years it has been the central point of many a horrific tale. These stories include those of demons, ghosts, and all things paranormal, and even the famous Highgate Vampire. Legend goes that the cemetery is home to this vampire as first reported by two girls walking through the area. They claimed to see the dead rise from their graves. Soon after this report came the discovery of animal carcasses, which is never a good sign, but to make matters worse, all of these ones had been drained of their blood. Stories of the vampire spread like wildfire and people were rightfully pretty creeped out. This all led to the vampire hunt that took place on Friday, April 13th, 1973. Friday the 13th. It's never good. During this hunt, residents of the town began exhuming bodies and then also beheading them. Okay? There are still many rumors and stories that swirl around the area and I'm just gonna go ahead and say, if the gates to hell weren't located here before the beheadings, they definitely are now. In our number 2 spot today we have the Skurid Inn in Wales. I love visiting a place that has lots of history. You know when you enter a building and can learn about its history and the people who used to walk in its halls? It's just so interesting and very cool, except for when you're sipping away on a cold tasty pint and find out that where you're sitting is a place that used to be used for public hangings. Yeah, things get a bit more grim when you bring that story up, alright? I don't know if I want what's on those taps. That is exactly the history behind the Skurid Inn. The upper area of the pub was once used as a courthouse where people would stand trial. If the person on trial was convicted and sentenced to death, I guess this place was super convenient because they also wouldn't have to waste any time and could just carry out the sentence right then and there. A bit dark I'd say. The bar decided it would keep the creepy little cell that was once used to hold the prisoners, which seems like an odd choice, but I guess it's all in the name of history. It is estimated that around 180 executions took place here and to this day you can still take a peek at the hanging beam that was used way back when. Not exactly sure I'd want to as there is no way that thing isn't cursed. Many people who have been to the bar state that they have felt things like a sudden drop in temperature, the feeling of a rope around their neck, or even seeing some strange scary shadowy figures. I got a strange feeling that if you were to head into the cell that's still around, you just might find yourself in a place that you don't want to go to. In our number one spot today we have Blickling Hall in Norfolk. Blickling Hall, located in Norfolk, England, is a beautiful stately home that dates back to the 15th century and it has been the subject of numerous reported ghost sightings and paranormal activity. One of the most famous ghost stories associated with the hall is that of the Anne Boleyn ghost. According to legend, Anne Boleyn, the second wife of Henry VIII, was born at Blickling Hall and her ghost is said to haunt the property. Her ghost has been seen wearing a white dress and carrying her own severed head. That is really about as haunting as it gets. Apparently on the anniversary of her execution, people have reported seeing Anne ride up to the estate in a ghostly carriage, driven by a man who is also headless. Another famous tale is that of the screaming lady. It is said that a lady who was killed in the hall has been heard screaming in the corridors at night. The estate is now owned by the National Trust because no one else would want to buy that haunted of a house, and it remains a popular spot for those interested in history as well as the paranormal. Starting us off here at number 10 is Black Hag's Cell. Found in a secluded hollow in Limerick County, Ireland, lies a mess of crumbling ruins and the ghost of a satanic nun said to have been buried alive. And if that isn't just the perfect setup for a horror movie. As the legend goes, sometime during the 16th century, the demonic nun would sneak out of her monastery at night to the nearby abbey. It was here she performed her satanic rituals such as sacrificing animals or placing curses on the locals to please the devil. But one day during a battle between rival houses, the nun was wounded by an arrow and fell unconscious. Believing her to be dead, they buried the nun immediately, but soon farmers started hearing screams coming from her burial plot. At first they brushed it off as nothing, but as the screams continued day in and day out, they rushed to exhume the body, worried they buried her too soon. But 
they were too late. The nun had died and was left with bloody fingers from trying to scratch her way out. It said at night her screams can still be heard echoing over the hills, and locals don't dare go near in fear that she will possess anyone who steps foot on the land. Coming in at number 9, Hoya Bashu Forest. Known as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania, this forest is the breeding ground of unexplained disappearances as well as countless paranormal phenomena. The forest, in fact, has so many terrifying tales surrounding it that many locals refuse to even enter it. But according to those brave enough to try, they were attacked by something indescribable, followed by hours of vomiting, nausea, migraines, and left covered in scratches, bruises, and even burns. Its most haunting legend is that of the forest girl, who allegedly entered at just five years old and disappeared. Five years later, she emerged from the woods wearing the same dress as the day she went missing, and she had no memories or recollection of going missing or what had happened to her in the last five years. Some believe that the forest is possessed by a satanic cult. A tour guide once said to have found a group of 60 people gathered in a clearing looking as if they were trying to open a gateway to another dimension, while others think it could be aliens. In 1968, a military technician released a photo he claimed to be a UFO, which was promptly hidden from the the public before he was fired. And I mean, it's not every day someone from the military is confirming a UFO sighting. Well, whether it's haunted by a demon or a spot frequented by aliens, either way, I have no interest in checking it out for myself. Next up at number 8 here is the Snector House. Once home to the Snector family in the 1980s, they thought they'd found the perfect spot, as it was a fairly affordable house and close to the hospital where their son was being treated. But it wasn't until after they were all settled that they learned the house had operated as a mortuary for several decades since the 1920s. At first, everything seemed alright, but soon they discovered old equipment from the funeral home in their basement. Now this raised an eyebrow, but they brushed it off and didn't think much of it. That was until they uncovered that their backyard still contained many of the buried corpses, along with eerie photographs of the corpses hidden away in nooks and crannies. Soon they were being haunted haunted by evil spirits, routinely hearing haunting noises and even seeing full bodied apparitions. The mother claims that when she was mopping the basement, the water would turn red as if it were blood, or that she would catch objects flying around the room while lights would aggressively flicker. At the time, there were rumors circulating that the formal funeral directors were guilty of necrophilia, which led to the house becoming haunted by an evil presence, seeking revenge on all that lived in the house for eternity. Coming in at number 7 is the Ancient Ram Inn. Rumored to be the most haunted building in England, there are no shortage of terrifying entities that haunt these grounds. Supposedly, the inn lies atop two ley lines, one of which directly intersects with Stonehenge. And if that wasn't enough cause for concern, it was also built over a 5,000 year old pagan burial ground. According to witnesses, a witch, a poltergeist, a succubus, and an incubus haunt the property, but many think it is much, much more. Legend has it that there are so many demons haunting the grounds that visitors routinely had to get exorcisms after their visit to the inn. Then in the 1960s, a man named John Humphreys bought the house and decided to make it his own. He had heard the rumors, but believed they were just that. Rumors. But on his first night, he felt something strange. There was something watching him, something very, very evil. Despite his inclination that a dark entity possessed his house, he continued to live there, often recounting paranormal sightings like strange voices, orbs of light appearing out of thin air, and said that once a force even grabbed him by the arm and dragged him around the living room. Even so, John remained until his dying days. And I mean, you do you, but if it were me, I would have been gone after the first night. Coming in at number 6 is Castle Huska. Located in North Prague, this castle was built back in the 13th century. Now there are a few things that are strange about this castle. Firstly, many of its windows are fake. They are simply glass panes in front of complete walls. Secondly, it lacks 
common things. There's no water source, no kitchen, and for years after its initial construction, there were no occupants. Lastly, the castle was built in a remote area. It was not near any trading routes, nor did it possess any kind of strategic value. That is because it was built for one reason and one reason only, to cover a large hole in the ground. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's so bad about that? Well, according to legend, the hole was actually a gateway to hell, and Satan himself was said to appear at this very spot. In an attempt to close off the gateway, the castle was constructed atop the hole, hoping to seal it for eternity. But during World War II, German soldiers settled in and used the castle to conduct experiments of the occult variety, and it's believed that these rituals brought out the evil spirits back into our realm. Today, both Satan and some of the evil soldiers haunt the hallowed halls, and some say if you listen closely, you might just be able to hear the scratching of demons trying to join them. Coming in at number 5, the Rose Hall Great House. According to legend, a woman named Annie Palmer moved to Jamaica in the early 1800s. Annie was young, but she was smart and had one big goal in mind, marry rich. While she may have looked sweet and innocent, Annie was actually a renowned voodoo practitioner and became known as the White Witch by the locals. Anyway, after a short while in Jamaica, she met Mr. John Palmer, the owner of the Rose Hall estate, and wasted no time locking him down. After the wedding, Annie moved into the estate with her husband, but not long after, he mysteriously died. As it turns out, it was not so mysterious after all, as Annie had poisoned her husband, and she continued to repeat this pattern twice more while ruling over the estate. And it wasn't just her husband's that Annie was cruel to, she was notoriously brutal to the slaves on the plantation, never hesitating to any one of them that stepped out of line or dared question her. Then there were her lovers. Annie was rumored to have copious amounts of lovers, many of which were enslaved to her, and incidentally, this would also be her downfall. After one of his family members, one of her enslaved lovers, Taku, snuck into Annie's room and killed her in her sleep. Taku was also a voodoo practitioner, and fearing she would haunt him after death, placed a curse on her grave to keep her entrapped. But it's said the ritual was never completed, so the ghost of Annie escapes each night, wreaking havoc on trespassers and terrifying all that see her. Next up at number 4 is the Ostrich Inn. During the 17th century, this inn was owned by a man named John Jarman and his wife. The two welcomed travelers from far and wide, but had a special appetite for wealthy customers. When such folks wandered into their inn, they took very kindly to them, offering them free ale and a special room above the kitchen, adorned with much nicer furnishings than the rest. But as I'm sure you've guessed, there was a huge catch. You see, the bed in this special room was nailed to the floor, and under the bed was a secret trap door. During the night, while their wealthy visitor was sleeping, the husband and wife would pull a lever in their kitchen, dropping the trap door and shooting the poor traveler into a vat of boiling water. Once they were dead, they would rob the wealthy traveler and then hide their body in the cellar. And they might have gotten away with it too if it weren't for Thomas Cole. Cole was a wealthy clothing maker and was swindled by the couple before being in the same way as many before him. But luckily, at the time of the incident, his horse happened to break loose and was wandering the town. Folks recognized the horse and thought that Cole must have fallen off, and so a search party began, eventually discovering him dead in the inn. The couple was arrested and sentenced to be hanged, but prior to their death, they confessed to 60 people in their inn. To this day, many have witnessed their evil spirits haunting the halls as well as all the souls whose lives were lost. Coming in at number 3 is the Demon House. Once the home of Mr. Cranmer, he claims that he and his family lived in this house of horrors for 18 years before an exorcism in 2006 finally drove the demon away. Cranmer says that over the years he would watch helplessly as blood dripped from his walls and invisible hands assaulted him and his family, fearing each day that it might be his last. But where did this possession begin? Well, Cranmer believed it all started with Dr. James Mahan, a former tenant of the home. Dr. Mahan was an alcoholic who routinely performed illegal operations on women in his basement. But not because he was looking to help these women, no, it was because he had a deal with a demon. Cranmer says the demon who haunts the house is Moloch, a demon who feeds off of 
sacrifices, and that Malik had possessed Dr. Mahan in order to feed off his basement operations. Once Dr. Mahan died, there was no one left to please this demon, and so he tortured all the families who moved in after, hoping to be able to scare them into giving him what he wanted. Luckily, Mr. Cranmer was able to rid the house of Malik, and his family escaped the torture unpossessed. Coming in at number two, the house of death. Once the home of actress and poet Jan Bryant Bartell in the 1960s, the house holds a reputation for housing some of the most demonic entities in all of New York City. Within weeks of moving in, Jan knew something was deeply wrong with the house. She would often feel the touch of an icy hand across the back of her neck or hear footsteps follow her around the empty house. The house always reeked like something was rotting or dying, and her dogs were always barking into nothingness. Then one day, one of her dogs died, as if out of nowhere, so she decided to take matters into her own hands and called on a psychic medium. But this only angered the demons living inside. During the first session, the medium went into an unusual trance, speaking about the hundreds of bodies buried underneath the house. Jan knew it wasn't the medium speaking, and it was then that she learned how many people had been or taken their own lives while living here. Then all of a sudden, the medium's eyes bulged out of her head and she started shouting that she would never leave in a deep demonic voice. The encounter was enough for Jan to leave and never return. A few years later, she published a book about her life in the haunted house, just weeks before she sadly took her own life. Still think it's just a coincidence? Years later, in 1987, a father brutally his own daughter in a drug-fueled rage, and many believe that he could have been possessed by the very same demon that Jan ran away from all those years before. And last up for you today in our number one spot, the Armstrong Street House. In 1970, a couple named Anne and Roger Brock moved their family into a beautiful four-bedroom house in Kokomo, Indiana. The family didn't have a ton of money, but they were able to score the house for just five grand, which in hindsight, could have been a clue. Mere hours after the family moved in, they began to experience strange things. Lights were flickering and noises were appearing, but they brushed it off as nothing. Then one night, one of the daughters, Lana, was awoken by sudden shaking all around her bed. She thought it was an earthquake at first, but then she looked out her window to see a strange man, seemingly drenched, standing right beside her bedroom window, staring at her. Lana freaked out, but then as quickly as he appeared, he was gone. This became routine for poor Lana, and demons started haunting her every night. One night, she heard a knock at her door, and assuming it was her parents, she went to answer it, only to have her mouth covered by an invisible hand. She tried to scream, but the hand wouldn't let her. Suddenly, her dog appeared and distracted the entity, allowing Lana to scream for help, but this only angered the spirit. To get back at her, it picked up the dog and threw it out the window, sending it plunging to its demise. Years later, they learned that someone was killed in the house, which could explain the tortures, but still, not a single member of the family has ever dared return. Number 10, the Bisman Building. The Bisman Building was built in 1886, and fun fact, the film Shawshank Redemption used this place as a filming location. If you have seen the film, the building is used as the entrance to the Brewer Hotel, where Brooks and Red stayed after they were paroled from Shawshank. The real building, though, is haunted. While here, many people experience a feeling of dread and sadness, particularly on the third floor. Many people also report an overwhelming sensation of darkness when on this floor, so if I were you, I would just stay away from the third floor in general. Disembodied footsteps, voices being poked and pushed, black shadows and dark figures caught in images seems to be something that happens a lot. Spirits of a young girl Ruthie, her aunt, and the spirit of a retired worker who died in an accident before leaving the building are three identical spirits that stay here. In past investigations here, investigators have received audible responses to their questions. Yep, the ghosts spoke to them. One piece of audio evidence was when an investigator asked if they could speak to Ruthie, and a voice was caught saying, is Ruthie here? In addition to Ruthie, people have witnessed the spirit of a woman throughout the upper floors, people in Victorian clothing, and the sounds of people working. Number 9. Staley Road Sometime in the early 
early 1800s, pioneer John Wrench used the services of three Staley brothers to build a flour mill. The finished structure was to become the first double wheeled mill in Ohio. The business flourished and after several years, John had made enough money to retire and ended up selling his mill to Elias Staley. The mill was then passed down to his brother Andrew and continued to produce flour until 1905. Today, the mill is still standing and on Staley Road, named for the brothers, winds its way past and through the woods. It has become something of a rite of passage for local teens to drive this road at night to show how brave they are. It's been said that old man Staley went on a rampage ending the lives of many and is now haunting the road. Motorists say that they often experience unexplained car trouble and some have even seen Staley's ghost standing next to or even lying in the road. Number 8. The Golden Lamb As the oldest hotel in Ohio, the Golden Lamb has seen more than its share of famous guests, including Charles Dickens, Mark Twain, Daniel Webster, and 12 American presidents. Yeah. 12. It's fantastic, but there's also been death and tragedy in the hotel. Guests have cited a girl who may be Sarah Stubbs, the niece of the hotel manager in the 1800s, or possibly Eliza Clay, a girl who died of a high fever at the hotel in 1825. The ghost of Charles R. Sherman, an Ohio Supreme Court justice who died at the inn in 1929, is said to appear in the hallways as a gray, gaunt man and conjures the smell of cigar smoke. Charles's death left his wife and 11 children, including Civil War General William T. Sherman, penniless. As a result, most of his children were put up for adoption, and some say the guilt of his family's demise keeps his spirit at the inn. Number 7. Moonville Tunnel Located deep in the woods, the tunnel is framed by a faded stone arcway covered in moss. The tunnel itself is long and extremely dark. It's actually an out of work stretch of railroad track that leads to an old coal mining town. If you're brave enough to to venture through it, you might see the ghost of Frank Lawhead, an unlucky train conductor who met his end in a head on collision with another train. Visitors in the area have taken photos with cameras or phones, only to look back at them later and notice the pale figure of a man they didn't see before, or phantom train lights blazing at the end of the tunnel. It's also said if you listen carefully, inhale deeply, and blink intermittently, you may encounter spirits from another time. The piercing whistle of a train rounding a curve, the smell of lavender wafting from a woman in an old fashioned dress, or even the glow of gaslit lantern illuminating the face of the weathered brakeman. So that's fun. Number 6. The Buxton Inn The Buxton Inn was built by Orrin Granger in 1812 as an inn in Tavern, and it also served as Granville's first post office and as a stagecoach stop. I'm just gonna say it, this place is Haunted. The first ghost spotted in the Buxton Inn was the first owner, Orrin. Other ghosts include the Lady in Blue, rumored to be the former innkeeper, Ethel Bonnie Bonnell, Major Buxton, whom the inn was named, and even a phantom cat seen slinking along the halls. There's been strange activity like footsteps and doors opening on their own reported in the inn's basement, where stagecoach drivers would often stay during their stopovers in the past. However, the ghosts just don't stay in the basement, oh no. Room 7 and 9 are said to be the strongest places for activity, with apparitions appearing. One guest even reported a ghost cat showing up to cuddle and purr in the middle of the night, which, like, Aw, that's so cute. <laughs> Guests have reported strange phenomenon throughout the hotel though, like their names being called out and invisible footsteps. I would not want to sleep there. Number 5. Woods Surrounding London Okay, again, not London, England, but London, Ohio. Deep inside these woods sits an old abandoned barn that is so rotted away it has practically melded back into the trees. It's rumored that ghosts like to spend some time here. If you ask anyone from the area, they'll tell you that these woods are haunted. According to legend, a family of five was traveling through the woods in the late 1890s when they were stopped and had their lives ended by a band of thieves. Those brave enough to wander through the woods of London at night have reported hearing gunshots and disembodied screaming. Others have felt a sudden drop in temperature before seeing a strange white mist hanging in the trees. Let me just say, 
it's a no for me. Number four, Ridges Asylum. Ridges Asylum originally opened in 1874 and was known as the Athens Asylum for the Insane. It had two wings, one for female patients and one for the male patients. The most violent patients were housed at the outermost tip of each wing. By the start of the 1900s, the asylum had become dangerously overcrowded and rumors of inhumane treatment at the hands of the overworked staff were growing. Despite this, it was not officially closed until 1990. Some parts of the building are still in use, while other areas are completely abandoned. One of the scariest places in the building is the outline of a body where Margaret Schrilling died in 1979. She apparently got lost in the disused part of the hospital in the winter of 1978-79 and was not found for more than a month. When the corpse was eventually removed, it left a stain that could never be washed away, which just makes me gag thinking about it, but imagine the smell, like ew. Ugh. She is one of the many ghosts who is said to walk the asylum at night. Strange figures have been seen roaming around the old floors. Others have heard disembodied voices, footsteps, and screaming. Most appealing to imagination is the basement. Some claim severely disabled patients were kept on chains in dungeon-like places. Some say they've even heard the chains being pulled. Oh, and there's also a cemetery on the grounds which holds over 1,930 bodies. Of those, 700 women and 959 men lay under the headstones marked with only a number, which is sad. Number 3. Bobby Mackey's. Built in 1850, Bobby Mackey's is said to be the most haunted nightclub in America. When it was first built, the building served as a slaughterhouse and meat packing facility. The standard for most slaughterhouses of its day, the facility featured a well to collect the runoff of animal blood, innards, and other waste. If that image wasn't icky enough, there have also been several deaths in and around the club throughout the years. The place harbors energy so dark that a portal to hell is rumored to swirl somewhere within its basement. There is strange suffocating heat, a trash can once flew through the air, and the apparition of a man with a handlebar mustache appears in the mirror. I would not want to get anywhere near that place. Ever. Number 2. Licking County Jail Originally opened in 1889, the Licking County Jail is now home to only prisoners serving after life sentences. It contains stacks of cramped, grimy cells lining its dimly lit halls. Since being put out of commission, the jail has become a notoriously haunted hotspot. While it was operating, a total of three sheriffs and 19 inmates died on the premise. If you make your way to Licking County Jail, it's said you should peer between the cell bars as figures of prisoners are said to peer back. Visitors have reported hearing cell doors slamming, being touched, whispering in your ear, whistles, the sound of footsteps, some of those being what seems residual, the jingling of keys, screams and moaning, as well as seeing strange light anomalies, full shadow figures, and photos with unexpected images in them. That sounds absolutely terrifying and I, I would not want to go there. And coming in at number one is Sedamesville Rectory. The Sedamesville Rectory is a historical building that once served as the home for priests of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church. Priests of questionable moral character were rumored to live here, if you know what I mean, including a man who was moved around considerably before retiring from the priesthood, leaving some to believe the church was covering up his tendency of mistreating animals. His fellow priests later confessed to hearing strange sounds sounds coming from his bedroom and feeling uneasy in his presence. As the alleged site of the mistreatment, it's no shock that the place has some wicked demonic energy. Reports detail strange howling cries and deep scratches appearing in the flesh of workers. The current owner of the building, Terry Scott, even claimed that she was pushed by an invisible force. The presence was so evil that a priest was called in to perform an exorcism, but his efforts did little to keep the demonic energy at bay. and whatever monster lurked in there still remains, and I would not want to mess with it. Number 10. White Rock Lake White Rock Lake is an area that is filled with many legends. It's home to the ghost of the Lady of the Lake. Years ago, a young couple was driving home from a party along the lake late one night. The two were tired and ready to go home when the wife suddenly screamed at her husband to stop the car. A young woman in a long white gown had appeared in the road before them. The couple asked the woman if she needed a 
ride and she accepted. They drove on and all while the wife could hear the steady drip, drip, drip of water. But once they reached the address the woman had given them, they turned around to find her gone, leaving behind only a puddle. Confused, the couple got out at the address and knocked on the door. An elderly man answered. They told the man about the young woman they had just picked up and he sighed and told them they were not the first couple to come knocking on his door late at night. The woman they had picked up was his daughter who had drowned in White Rock Lake 10 years earlier. The lady of the lake has been spotted and even picked up many times since and continues to haunt White Rock Lake in her white gown looking for a way back home and this is just sad. <laughs> Number 9. Adolphus Hotel The Adolphus Hotel was built on the former site of Dallas's original city hall in 1912, and the hotel has a reputation as one of the city's most prominent historical landmarks. In addition to being the oldest hotel in the city, it's no surprise it's also among the most haunted. One of the most famous spirits here is an apparition who appears in a 1930s era white wedding gown, the spirit of a jilted bride who was supposed to have been married in one of the hotel's glamorous ballrooms on the 19th floor, but ended up taking her own life at the hotel instead when her groom left her at the altar. Ever since that night, guests staying on the 19th floor report hearing a woman crying, footsteps running up and down the hall, and even the sound of rope creaking under the strain of a body. The bride's spirit has been spotted wandering the halls after events and parties, still wearing her white dress and veil. Again, this is just incredibly sad. Staff and guests of the hotel also report or an eerie feeling of being watched or of a presence in the room with them. Now, not all ghost residents have sad backstories as many are believed to be former guests who checked in again during the afterlife because they had such a good time in the hotel back in their days among the living. Guess it's a cool place to be in in life and death. Number 8. The Coombs Creek Trail Located in Oak Cliff, this trail offers a serene, scenic path along Coombs Creek for nature lovers to enjoy, but everything is not as it seems, as this trail has an eerie history. Years ago, a young girl named Mary would ride her bike every day along the trail, but one day, Mary never returned home. It's still unknown whether Mary drowned in the creek, was struck by a passing train, or was taken, but she seems to have disappeared without a trace. Hikers still report seeing the figure of a young girl riding her bike dangerously close to the edge of the water, but when they call out to warn her, she vanishes into thin air. Others have reported seeing a small ghostly face of a young girl peeking at them from behind a tree. When they try to move closer to investigate, the face disappears. Then the face reappears further along the trail, inviting the hiker to follow her deeper and deeper into the woods. And if a ghost child is trying to get me to go deeper in the woods, I I'm just gonna turn around and leave. Number 7. The Majestic Theater The Majestic Theater is located on Elm Street in downtown Dallas. Elm Street? No, no, I've seen that movie before. Now, in the 1910s, it housed live vaudeville performances before transitioning to screening films in 1922. The Majestic remained in business until the 1970s, and then its doors were reopened for live performances in 1983 after it landed on the National Register of Historic Places. Some say the theater's original owner, Carl Hoppitzel, still haunts the building, making sure things run according to his liking. One former employee claimed he shared an office space with Carl during his time there. He reports that one of his responsibilities each night was to ensure that the door in his office leading to the theater was locked, but each morning when he showed up for work, the door was wide open and a strange chill would permeate from the room. When he mentioned this to his manager, he laughed and explained that this was only Carl, who liked to use the door to get into the theater and check up on things. Weird smells, stage props inexplicably moving, and a light hanging above the balcony illuminating on its own have all been attributed to Carl. His spirit is rumored to linger there to this day, making sure his theater runs smoothly and maybe catching a show or two. Number 6. Snuffers Restaurant on Greenville Avenue Snuffers is a popular local chain that serves classic American food, or at least that's what it says when I google it. But the location on Greenville Avenue serves up a lot more than just burgers. Customers and staff of the Dallas restaurant claim that the place is seriously haunted. Before Snuffers 
scuffers, there was an easy parlor. It seems that a man was badly injured after hours when a fight broke out at an employee party. He then stumbled into the bathroom where he drew his final breaths. Years later, once Easy Parlor became Snuffers, the managers would sit at a table by the bathrooms each night to finish up closing paperwork. As they sat in the dark, near empty restaurant, they would listen as antagonized, stumbling footsteps made their way to the bathroom, then watch as the door creaked open by itself and never shut. In 2013, the original building was demolished and reconstructed, but reports of strange happenings didn't stop. Other employees have since reported feeling cold gusts of wind rush by them and doors slamming shut all on their own. Sounds like a dinner and a show to me. <laughs> Number 5. Flagpole Hill Just adjacent to White Rock Lake is a road leading to the infamous Flagpole Hill, the rumored location of a band of rock hurdling poltergeists. Yep, you heard that right, they just throw rocks at you. Passerbys report driving through the area late at night only to be pelted by a rain of pebbles. When they got out of the car to chase down the culprits, there were none to be found. Local legend identifies the ghost as three restless spirits tangled in the dark history of the area. According to the story, a construction worker ended their own life in the house on Flagpole Hill before its completion, and a hired hitman was later convicted of taking out the couple who occupied it. Now, don't think just because you're not in a car, you're safe. Those walking on foot rather than driving past seem to be just as unlucky. Hikers and other residents of the area have reported an unseen assailant pelting them with rocks as they pass by. Sounds like this place really rocks. Get it? Because. <laughs> So funny. Number four, the Miller Moore Mansion. Located in Dallas Heritage Village is Miller Moore Mansion. It was completed in 1857 and was the home of William Brown Miller, who served in the Confederate Army. This beautiful home is said to be haunted by an unidentified lady ghost who always seems to lurk near the nursery. Now, the general belief of who the lady is is the spirit of a woman named Emma. Now, Emma was the third wife of William Brown Miller, and allegedly, everyone who encounters Emma tells a similar story. People see a woman going up the stairs and they describe the same woman, always wearing a long brown dress. She has been seen in the front foyer and people claim to have seen her in the middle window where the nursery is. Many Miller Moore visitors have also reported unexplained cold spots and a distinct feeling of being watched during their visit. Seems like Emma is always watching. Number three, Sons of Herman Hall. Herman Hall's website marks itself as the oldest freestanding wood structure in Dallas, as well as the oldest bar. And for over a hundred years, the hall has held concerts, parties, and dances. So no wonder the dead come back there to party. Both staff members and guests of the hall have reported strange occurrences, especially in late hours of the night. Some guests have seen paintings fly off the wall as thrown by some unseen force. Others have heard footsteps in the hallways and seen doors suddenly slam shut. Guests also claim to hear children laughing, even when no children were present, which is just creepy. Longtime staff members of Herman Hall report sensing a lingering presence and seeing flashes of light and shadow. One particular staff member recounts a time he and some other employees saw a couple dressed in Victorian era clothing walk past them and go upstairs, but about 30 minutes later when the couple hadn't returned, the staff went upstairs to find all the doors locked and no one inside them. I just think these ghosts want to return to their party days though. Number 2. Goatman's Bridge Goatman's Bridge, more formally known as the Old Alton Bridge in Argyle. Dating back to the 1930s, locals have told tales of the specter of a strange half man, half goat creature lurking beneath the bridge. The goat man is said to stand over seven feet tall with big horns and glowing red eyes, which to me just sounds like the devil, but I mean, hey, goat man is a cool name. Some believe the goat man remains dormant for years at a time and awakes only to hunt for prey. Now, the goat man isn't the only spirit on this bridge, as to keep him company is another spirit that of a young mother crying out eternally for her lost child. Residents making their way over the bridge late at night have reported hearing her ghostly wails. Some say the two ghosts are connected and that years ago the goat man stole the young woman's baby. When she found out, she threw herself from the bridge and her spirit has haunted it ever since. Now I already don't like bridges because of heights and being over bodies of water, but being on a haunted bridge, 
No, thank you. And coming in at number one is Miss Molly's Hotel. Located in the Dallas Fort Worth area, Miss Molly's Hotel is a little deceiving. In the lawless pioneer days of the Old West, Miss Molly's operated as a bordello, making working girls and their customers among the most common apparitions to appear here. One such customer even has a room named after him, the Cowboy Room, where he has been frequently spotted by guests and staff of the hotel. His name is Jake the Cowboy, and when Paula go became manager of Miss Molly's, she had no clue that it was haunted. After months, she reported that strange things started happening and she eventually saw Jake herself. She said, I saw him in full body, he walked into a room and shut the door behind him, and I went up and knocked on the door and opened the door and no one was there. That is when I knew that something was up because I'm sitting there thinking I know I'm not crazy. Another ghost there is assumed to be a former madame by the name of Josie King. Some suspect that she oversaw the house during its bordello days. Josie is seen a lot, usually at 3 a.m. at the foot of the bed, and allegedly Josie likes to watch people sleep. Um, no, no thanks. Guests can also look at the hotel's collection of creepy photographs or listen to eerie audio recordings captured through the years. And we're starting off this list with the Comedy Store in West Hollywood. The Comedy Store in West Hollywood had a reputation for being haunted for a long time due to a slew of reported supernatural experiences and encounters. Staff, comedians, and patrons have shared stories of unexplained sounds, shadowy figures, and eerie sensations while in the building, especially in the basement. Footsteps have been heard echoing in empty halls, and snarling sounds have also been reported. Some attribute these occurrences to the building's past, as it was formerly a nightclub called Ciro, a very hit place in the 40s and 50s, but with ties to the mob, and the basement is where a lot of problem people were dealt with. Tragic events that have taken place there over the years may have left behind some lingering energy. Visitors have described sudden drops in temperature, objects moving on their own, and a general sense of someone or something watching them. The comedy store's paranormal stories have become so well known that there are even ghost tours of the club's supposedly haunted basement nowadays. Number nine, the Warner Pacific Theater, now called the Hollywood Pacific Theater. This historic building is said to be haunted by Sam Warner, one of the Warner Brothers, who put a ton of hard work and money into opening this theater, the first to be built for sound. In 1927, the theater was going to hold the premiere for the Warner Bros. produced film, The Jazz Singer, the very first sound film, or talkie, as it was referred to at the time. But there were construction delays, so the film was going to have its premiere in New York instead. But just one day before this big premiere, Sam Warner would collapse, dead of a cerebral hemorrhage. He never got to hear the reviews. He never got to enjoy the fruits of his labor. But some have reported feeling his ghostly presence in the theater to this very day, or even catching a glimpse of his ghostly presence making his way through the building. The elevator has been seen going up and down by itself, and apparently Sam's ghost likes moving things around in his old office or even scratching at the door. Number eight, we have the Hollywood sign itself. Legend has it that the ghost of Peg Entwistle, an aspiring actress in the 1920s and early 30s, roams the area near the sign. Peg Entwistle was a struggling actress who never really made it. On September 18th, 1932, a hiker discovered a shoe, purse, and jacket close to the sign. They soon found her body in a ravine below the sign, and it was determined that Entwistle had climbed a workman's ladder and jumped from the letter H of the sign. It's said that her spirit still haunts the area to this day. Some say they spotted a ghostly figure or felt a cold breeze on the path leading to the sign. Locals and hikers have reported sensing an unexplainable presence or catching a glimpse of a ghostly woman in old-fashioned clothing ascending the hill as nighttime falls over the Hollywood Hills. Some claim to hear faint echoes of her footsteps or hear her cries carried by the wind. Next on the list, we have Griffith Park. The sprawling urban park is known for its fun attractions and natural beauty. I mean, it is a park after all. Covering over 4,000 acres, the park offers a mix of hiking trails, picnic areas, the iconic Griffith Observatory, and even a zoo, although it's abandoned. But aside from all that nice stuff, Griffith Park is also a reputation for being haunted. Legend says that the land was cursed in 1863 by a girl named Donna Petra 
Petronella, whose uncle, a wealthy land baron, cut her out of his will. And one of the most famous haunted spots within the park is the Griffith Observatory itself, sitting on a hill overlooking the city. This historic landmark has had a number of ghost stories associated with it. Some claim to have seen shadowy figures moving about the observatory after hours, while others report hearing unexplained footsteps echoing throughout the halls. Another haunted hotspot is the old zoo area, abandoned in sometime in the 1960s or late 50s. The dilapidated remnants of cages have fueled tales of these ghostly animal sounds and the figures of former zoo inhabitants. Ghost animals, I've never heard that one before though. I like it. Local lore also says Griffith Park has some darker stories, including alleged occult activity. Number six, the Colorado Street Bridge. The Colorado Street Bridge in Pasadena, California has a spooky reputation due to its sad history. It was completed in 1913, and it's a gorgeous bridge, but it's known for more than just its impressive looks. Back during the Great Depression, a lot of people ended their lives on the bridge, which has led to its pretty on the nose nickname, you can probably imagine what it is. So because of these tragedies, folks started telling stories about the bridge being haunted. People who have been there talk about strange things like ghostly apparitions and shadows that don't make sense or hearing whispers or disembodied voices. There's one story about a woman uh, being seen crossing the bridge, cars swerving in order to avoid hitting her, only for the woman to vanish out of thin air. Stories like this have made the bridge pretty famous in books, movies, and even TV. And at number five, we have the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. First used in 1899, there are tons of Hollywood celebrities buried there, and it's still an active cemetery to this day. It's also said to be incredibly haunted. Are there any cemeteries that aren't haunted though? Visitors have reported all kinds of paranormal activity here. You have your standard haunted place, like kind of stuff, cold spots, disembodied voices, semi-translucent people roaming around. But one that comes up a lot apparently is that of a woman crying by a lake on the cemetery grounds. Of course, she vanishes when you approach her. I do imagine there is uh, plenty of crying going on in a cemetery because of all the dead people, but uh, this is different. Next up, we have Grauman's Chinese Theater. This is probably one of the most famous movie theaters in the world. Its forecourt has concrete tiles with the handprints and signatures of various different stars. And the building itself takes inspiration from ancient Chinese architecture. The theater was opened by Sid Grauman in 1927, and apparently he had built hidden rooms in the theater for his famous friends to party in, and there was like a buzzer system that would allow them inside these rooms. Those hidden rooms have since been sealed off, but one famous story tells of an employee in the 90s who kept hearing buzzers going off in some of these old secret rooms, although the buzzers had long been disconnected as well. There's also said to be the ghost of a former employee of the theater named Fritz, who took his own life behind the movie screen. And there's also apparently a ghost of a young girl, an old timey clothing named Annabelle, who roams about the theater at night. Coming in at number three, we have the Pantages Theater. This theater, located in the heart of Hollywood, is a historic building with a reputation for being haunted by ghouls and ghosts. Built in 1930, the theater has hosted you know, a variety of performances over the years, vaudeville acts, films, and back in 1949, Howard Hughes, the millionaire aviator, took control of RKO Studios and its main theater, Pantages. He set up his fancy offices in the second floor, and his presence is often still felt even today, apparently. Hughes seems to have a unique signal, the smell of cigarette smoke, which seems to announce his arrival, although he disliked smoking. A ghostly apparition of him, tall and thin in a simple suit, has been reported being seen walking through a wall that used to be his office doorway. But he's not the only specter said to haunt the building. In 1932, a woman passed away in the mezzanine during a show. Over time, people started hearing a woman's voice singing in the theater, sometimes during the day and even late at night after everyone left. The staff had a theory. The woman might have been an aspiring singer who came to enjoy musicals in the 30s. Now she seems to be living her dream by performing on stage herself. Engineers have even caught her voice on a live performance microphone in one show, even though no one could actually see her on stage. 
Coming in at number two, we have the Cecil Hotel. If you have any interest in haunted buildings or just creepy internet content, there's no doubt that you've heard of the Cecil Hotel. This historic hotel, now an affordable housing complex known as the Stay on Main, is pretty famous for a series of dark incidents. A lot of deaths have taken place there, and the circumstances of some of them are quite mysterious, some of which have never even been solved. Probably the most famous case uh, this building is connected to is Elisa Lam, who had gone missing for a while while with nothing but footage of her kind of erratic behavior captured in one of the elevator's security cameras. Her body was eventually found, however, she had managed to make her way to the roof where she fell into an open water tank. She was discovered after guests had reported their water running black and having an odd taste. The Cecil was also home to some pretty notorious people, like the Night Stalker himself, Richard Ramirez. There are so many dark stories surrounding this place that many believe it to be haunted by countless spirits of those who met their end within its walls. And finally, we have the Roosevelt Hotel. The Hollywood Roosevelt is rumored to be haunted by the ghost of Marilyn Monroe. There used to be a mirror in the lobby where people would report spotting a reflection when taking a picture in front of it. Room 928 is also supposedly haunted by the ghost of Montgomery Clift, who lived in the room while filming Here to Eternity. There have been a number of stories where people hear the sounds of a trumpet playing coming from the room, even when the room is vacant. The hotel switchboard is also known to receive calls from empty rooms. And faucets and lights have been known to turn on by themselves as well. I like the sound of this. Nothing necessarily harmful going on. You got some trumpet playing in the room next to you. Your lights turn out without you even having to get up. You can snap a picture with Marilyn Monroe on your way out. When you look at it that way, it sounds like a pretty relaxing time. Number 10, Malabar Farm. Malabar Farm was built in 1939 by Pulitzer Prize winning author Louis Bromfield and was his home until his death in 1956. But before it was built, another family lived there in the 19th century. Celie Rose, a challenged young woman who lived there with her family, developed a romantic fixation on a neighborhood boy. When Celie's family told her to stop claiming the boy as her fiance, she mixed rat poison in their porridge. Her father and brother died, but her mother survived. At her trial, Celie couldn't understand why her parents didn't come to see her. After all, she said, the rats always came back after her daddy fed them rat poison in the barn. Afterwards, she went on and lived with her mother, whom, yes, she tried to kill, but then Celie poisoned her again, and this time it worked. At age 23, Celie stood trial truly alone, but was found not guilty by reason of insanity and sent to a state hospital. She lived out the rest of her life in an insane asylum, and since then the house has been haunted. One visitor saw a woman dressed like Celie Rose outside the house. People have seen lights flicker, felt a phantom cat, disembodied voices are heard, and there's an overall eerie feeling on the property. Yeah. No kidding. Number 9. Beaver Creek State Park Although this park is beautiful during the day, it has a darker side at night. A portion of the park was once part of a canal system from the early 1800s. There are two locks that are said to be haunted. Jake's Lock is said to be named after a former canal worker who was struck by lightning while walking across the top of the lock. He died instantly, but some claim that on certain nights, especially stormy ones, Jake returns with his ghostly lantern to continue his evening's work. Spooky. Nearby, Gretchen's Lock is said to be haunted by the ghost of a canal worker's daughter. Legend has it her father put her coffin inside the lock until he could load her body onto a ship headed for their homeland. But when the coffin was loaded onto a ship bound for home, the ship was lost at sea and didn't make it. Gretchen, pleading to rejoin her mother, reportedly makes an appearance at the lock every year on the anniversary of her death, which is just very sad. Number 8. The Wandle House. The Wandle House was constructed in 1916 by the Wheeling and Lake Erie Railway with funds contributed by railroaders. The Brewster Railroad YMCA featured 62 dormitory rooms used by the railroad workers, a restaurant, movie theater, and bowling alley. Today, the building is home to the Historical Society and houses memorabilia from baseball team photos, class pictures from Beach City and Brewster schools, railroad memorabilia and equipment, payroll records, and military uniforms. It's filled with 
with tons of history, so those from the past like to visit. While there, you might come across Teresa, who worked in the eatery around the 1940s and 50s. People have also reported hearing noises, seeing doorknobs turning on their own, and dark figures. And even one time, someone who was doing work in the basement of the building watched a person walk through a wall. Let me just say, I've seen a ghost walk through a wall before too, and it's creepy, so it's not something I'd like to see again. Number 7. Crybaby Bridge Locals say if you stand on the Alliance Area Bridge at night, the sound of crying can be heard. Some say that mothers who did not want their sons or daughters during the baby boom would talk them from the bridge into the river below in the dark of the night. Others believe the cry stemmed from members of a cult kidnapping locals and ending their lives as part of their secret ritual. And finally, some say ghostly cries stem from a distraught mother who lost it after her daughter would not stop crying. In desperation, she tossed her over the bridge to her death, and upon realizing what she had done, the woman reportedly drove off the bridge her own life. This is all around sad and creepy, but if I heard crying noises without anyone around and on a bridge nonetheless, I would be terrified. Number 6. Old Chestnut Grove Cemetery The story goes a woman accused of witchcraft was executed and buried at the cemetery. The townsfolk did not erect a marker, but instead built an iron fence around her grave, which was next to an old tree. An indentation next to the tree inside the fence marks her grave, and it's said that bad things will happen to those who get close to her grave. Another variation of the story says that several witches were executed and buried here, and their ghosts continue to haunt this area, which does not shock me. Not only did this happen, but on December 29th, 1876, the number 5 Pacific Express was traveling over a high bridge, carrying approximately 159 passengers and crew when the bridge collapsed. It sent the train and the people on it into the ravine below, and 92 people died. Many were burned alive while trapped inside the crushed cars and are buried in a mass grave at the cemetery. Due to this, people have seen ghosts of the passengers and unexplained voices on tape have been recorded. Number 5. Malsalon Public Library Let me just say, there's more than books in this building. Before it was a library, it was a house, and former residents Clara Baldwin Barrick and Annie Baldwin both died in the home. Clara lived in the home from 1895 to 1909, and her daughter-in-law Annie died in the home in 1930. This might explain why this place is haunted. Some visitors have heard footsteps or smelt an unfamiliar perfume. Employees get a chill with no explanation in the outreach room located in the basement of the former home. A patron once claimed to have been pushed by an apparition while in the library, and a security camera in the library caught the elevator traveling to the third floor at 3 a.m. The doors opened and a bright light could be seen, and the phenomena has been caught on tape several times and there is no explanation explanation, and that is just like an immediate no. No. Director Sherry Brown, who has worked at the library since 1979, said she was working in her office, a former bedroom of the home, after the library closed when she thought she saw an employee walk past her office door. She yelled out, but got no answer. When she investigated, she found no one. Paranormal investigators have conducted research in the library and have gotten responses from the ghosts during electronic voice phenomenon sessions. And if you thought libraries were boring, let me just say this one definitely definitely isn't. Number 4. Lock 4 Park An incident occurred here in 1857 which has resulted in the park being haunted. A canal worker, whom some say was the lock tender, may have been angry about the potential of work being shut down and wanted revenge. The angry worker doused his fellow workers with a container of acid or some type of caustic liquid. It said the enraged worker tossed the lid open and flung the continents on his fellow workers, dumping the rudiments on himself. Legend states that no immediate deaths ensued sued, but rather the men suffered gruesome, slower deaths that took several days. A few men perished due to their acid-eaten skin and organs. The man responsible also died. Today, screams and moans of those who were burned by the acid supposedly can still be heard by some if they listen closely while visiting Lock 4 Park. Also, the Lock Tender's cabin, which is located in the park, may also be haunted by the spirit of the angry worker. Number 3. 
3. Franklin Castle Franklin Castle is reported to be the most haunted house in Ohio. Rumors about the eerie castle began to surface after multiple deaths occurred in the Tideman family while living in the mansion. The home was built in 1883 by Haynes Tideman, a banker and co-founder of the Union Banking and Savings Company. And let me just add that the house has four stories and more than 20 rooms and 80 windows. Now Haynes allegedly tore down another house on the property where four of his children had died. His first wife Lucia died inside Franklin Castle in the 1890s. The American businessman would eventually bury three more of his children and his mother. Since then, the location has been the site of mysterious hauntings. A family with six children called the Romanos had moved into the house and on the day they moved in, two of their children said they encountered a crying girl in white on the third floor. But when Miss Romano investigated, no one was there. Soon the family started hearing haunting organ music and heavy footsteps. Two of the older Romano children woke up one night to find something yanking the blankets off their bed. And Miss Romano once awoke to find herself screaming on her bedroom floor with an unseen presence screaming beside her. A priest advised the Romanos to move out and in 1974, they did. But the hauntings didn't stop when the Romanos left. From there, the house was sold again and again and again. Each new occupant reported strange occurrences like passing through odd vapors, hearing a child crying, or seeing a woman in black standing in the window. Since reports of hauntings at Franklin's castle increased, many turned their suspicions onto its original owner. Number 2. Sister Century House Restaurant Now a restaurant, this building has seen a lot in the past. It was built in 1870 and has been home to several businesses in historic Canal Fulton throughout the years. It currently houses a family owned restaurant but was most notably home to a crematorium which was located in the basement back in the early 1900s. I mean, since this place was once filled with dead people, it's no shock that it's haunted. There have been rumors of shadow people, a poltergeist in the kitchen, ghostly ladies in the basement, the entrance to an old tunnel, and even an unusual room that makes people a bit dizzy. The food though seems to be great as the restaurant has a 4.6 star rating, so if you want to see some ghosts and have a great meal, I suggest you check this place out. And coming in at number 1, the Ohio State Reformatory. The Ohio State Reformatory opened its doors on September 15, 1896 to its first 150 offenders. These prisoners were brought by train from Columbus and put immediately to work on the prison sewer system in the 25 foot stone walls surrounding the complex. The reformatory remained in full operation until December 1990 when it was closed via federal court order as a result of a prisoner's class action suit citing overcrowding and inhumane conditions. For example, in the late 1930s, a riot broke out in the East Cell Block. The guards condemned 120 rioters to share 12 solidary confinement cells for one week without food or water. This punishment drove many to the brink of madness and death. During its 94 years as a working prison, 154,000 inmates passed through the gates of the Ohio State Reformatory. Many died of diseases like influenza and tuberculosis, some went mad, others ended their lives, and at least one inmate lit himself on fire. Just outside the reformatory, there are 215 numbered graves. While visiting, people have reported being pushed and punched by unseen forces. Many claim to feel a chill while on the prison grounds. People have also heard cell doors slam shut and seen dark apparitions. Even the road leading to the Ohio State Reformatory seems to be haunted. Local legend suggests it's the ghost of Phoebe Wise, a notorious hermit and eccentric. Number 10. Rue Young Hotel Often regarded as the ugliest building in the world, which I can agree with, the Rue Young Hotel is a 180 story structure in Pyongyang. The hotel was started in 1987 and stopped in 1993, and it seems unlikely that it will ever be finished as a functioning hotel. The building consists of 3,000 suites and 5 revolving restaurants, at least as it was planned. Currently, it sits at the heart of the city as a concrete shell, but its massive size, aka 1,082 feet, makes it difficult to ignore as it dominates the skyline. But if you ask anyone who lives in the city, they deny it exists, even though it's clearly 
there. Tourists traveling by taxi have found it impossible to use the hotel as a landmark because no one admits that the building is there. It's even airbrushed out of official photographs. And even if it ever is finished, who is supposed to stay there? Even ignoring the low wages of the average North Korean, there's no real tourism industry to speak of, so it's just strange. Number 9. The Arch of Reunification The Arch of Reunification was erected in 2001 to commemorate Kim Il-sung's proposal of a reunited Korea. The arch stands above the Reunification Highway, which leads from Pyongyang to the demilitarized zone DMZ. The concrete arc features two Korean women dressed in traditional outfits, holding up a sphere with a map of unified Korea on it. It's one of the more thoughtful gestures from the dictatorship, so thoughtful in fact that it it almost makes you forget about those tunnels they dug leading into South Korea. Almost. Anyway, the arch is strange for two reasons. One, the highway it stands above is largely unused. Tourists in the capital city often remark how the highway has large lanes but little traffic. The use of so few cars is attributed to the poor financial standing of the average citizen, so bikes are a more common form of transportation. But the streets are so empty that tour guides will cut across lanes on either side to avoid the numerous potholes. There are also people that believe that the arches have a dual purpose. According to some, the arch was constructed with explosives inside, and I honestly wouldn't put it past them doing this. Number 8. Web Cafes North Korea doesn't really have internet access. Their websites, almost all of them government controlled, are as secluded as the country itself, and for many, the only means of accessing them are through web cafes. North Korea is unable to host their own web pages, and as a result, they rely instead on China, Japan, Germany, and even the United States for servers. As of 2007, Quang Mai Young only permitted access to a little over 30 different pages. They don't offer any connections to the outside world, and instead requests can be made for content. If accepted, Quang Meng Yong downloads, censors, and re-uploads the content. However, Quang Meng Yong remains unattainable for most people. 90% of North Koreans are completely unfamiliar with the internet. While it's theoretically possible to pick up a satellite connection from other agents' ISPs, smuggling the needed components into the country is next to impossible. For tourists, hotels in the city offer email services, however users aren't permitted to type their messages directly. Instead, they must be written and handed to an employee, and many tourists have noted that their messages are never received and probably are never sent, which is, wow. What a shocker. Number 7. Yongbyon Nuclear Facility One of North Korea's most controversial sites is the Yongbyon Nuclear Scientific Research Center. Yongbyon is North Korea's main nuclear facility. It houses the country's first nuclear reactors and produced the fuel used in the country's nuclear tests in 2006 and 2009. The center produced the fissile material for North Korea's six nuclear weapon tests from 2006 to 2017, and since 2009 is developing indigenous light water reactor nuclear power station technology. As of January 2019, the main facilities did not appear to be operating. However, in August 2021, the International Atomic Energy Agency reported North Korea appeared to have restarted the 5MW reactor, so that's fun. Number 6. Kim Jong-il's Tomb When North Korea's great leader Kim Il-sung suddenly died in 1994, the country was in a state of staged national mourning that had never been seen before on such a scale. Then when his successor, the great leader's son Kim Jong-il, the dear leader, suddenly died as well at the end of 2011, the scenes of public mourning even topped those in 1994. Now they lay to rest in the same building, but with everything in North Korea, you just can't go there and visit. One tourist got the chance and said, you're at the mercy of your tour guides and what they've been told they can show you. When we went, Kim Jong-il was laying in state in his glass coffin. Somber music piped through hidden loudspeakers, not a word was spoken. Guards made sure the procedures were orderly and appropriate. We had to line up in fours and bow three times at the great leader's feet and both sides but not the head, as this is regarded as disrespectful apparently. You also can't take photographs. Now, that description just sounds overall spooky, and I don't think I'd want to go there even if I could. Number 5. Hwasong Camp The 212 square mile prison camp is believed to house 10,000 people, many of them political prisoners. Reportedly, no one has ever escaped. Prisoners are exploited for hard, dangerous, and deadly labor in mining, logging, and agriculture. 
According to Mr. Lee, a former security officer in Hwasong camp, the inmates were overworked and they had very little time to rest. Prisoners had to work all day until they fulfilled their quotas and attend self-criticism meetings afterward. Often they were allowed to sleep only for four hours at night. Mr. Lee witnessed many fatal accidents in the workplace and information is extremely limited as the camp has always been a maximum security camp under strict control and surveillance. An unidentified teenager reported how he was sent to the camp with his entire family at age 13. He witnessed his father being beaten cruelly and his mother and sisters being taken advantage of by security guards. Residents from nearby villages have heard about the horrific conditions inside the camp, but were never allowed to get near the camp. Number 4. Ki Jong Dong Ki Jong Dong, better known as Propaganda Village, is a truly creepy place in North Korea. Built in the 1950s, Ki Jong Dong is situated on North Korea's end of the DMZ and has a grand total of 200 people living in it. Well, that's if you believe the North Korean government. In reality, there are absolutely no residents. Zero. It's completely empty. The village was designed to show off the virtues of North Korean lifestyle to South Korean villages in view and to lead to defection. The brightly painted concrete buildings were much more lavish than rural villagers in either country could afford. Each building is wired for electricity with lights running on a timer. Skeleton crews appear at night to maintain the buildings and give the general appearance that someone might actually be living there. However, anyone with a set of binoculars can see that the buildings are empty, some completely lacking floors, ceilings, and even glass windows. Whether or not the village has led to defection is unknown, but it's hard to imagine anyone falling for the trick nearly 60 years later. Number 3. Kim Il-sung Stadium Kim Il-sung Stadium is a multi-purpose stadium located in Pyongyang, the capital city of North Korea. It's the largest stadium in the world and can house 150,000 people. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can a stadium be scary? Well, what it's used for is truly haunting. Rarely, if ever, are there any sports events held there as the stadium is mostly used for propaganda and military parades. During these parades, there are many huge images shown in the stands, but it's actually just North Koreans holding up a piece of cardboard to create the image. They have to stand there holding up the cardboard for hours. It's also been alleged that traitors of the state have been taken into the stadium to be paraded around and have never been seen again. In particular, a group of generals disappeared in the stadium after an attempted coup attempt. And later on that day, smoke could be seen coming out of the stadium. Number 2. Room 39 Room 39 is an organization meant to get foreign currency for the leader through any means necessary. It was established by the nation's forefather Kim Il-sung in the late 1970s. The agents there would manufacture drugs, counterfeit notes, deal arms, and traffic humans to fund their leader's lavish lifestyle. They hired chemists to produce which are then smuggled to Japan, China, and across Asia. The mysterious organization is estimated to bring Kim Jong-un between, between $500 million and $1 billion per year, enabling him to buy political support and fund nuclear programs. With the revenue from Room 39, Kim never goes hungry. While his people starve to death, Kim enjoys dishes like foie gras, lobster, and caviar. Overall, this is just insane to me how they can get away with this. And coming in at number 1 is Camp 22. Camp 22 was a prison camp in North Korea that was reported to have been closed in 2012, but I'm not too sure I believe that. The camp was a maximum security area, completely isolated from the outside world. The camp was founded around 1965 and is surrounded by an inner 3,300 volt electric fence and an outer barbed wire fence with traps and hidden nails between the two fences. The camp was controlled by roughly 1,000 guards and 500 to 600 administrative agents. The guards were equipped with many weapons to make sure that the prisoners behaved. In the 1990s, there was an estimated 50,000 prisoners in the camp. Prisoners were mostly people who criticized the government, people deemed politically unreliable, or purged senior party members. Based on the guilt by association principle, they are often imprisoned together with their whole family, including children and the elderly, and including any children born in the camp. All prisoners were detained until they died, they were never released. A former guard described the conditions in the camp as harsh and life-threatening. He likened the prisoners to walking skeletons, dwarfs, and cripples in rags. He estimated that about 30% of the prisoners had deformities, such as torn off ears, smashed eyes, crooked noses, and faces covered with cuts and scars resulting from beatings and other mistreatment. 
Around 2,000 prisoners he said had missing limbs, but even prisoners who needed crutches to walk were still forced to work. Prisoners had to do hard physical labor in agriculture, mining, and inside factories from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., followed by ideological re education and self criticism sessions. Almost 30,000 people reportedly died of starvation at this camp in 2012. This is literally so disgusting, and it makes me so upset that humans could treat other people that way. Ugh. Number 10, Satan's Castle San Bernardino. Yes, this place is called Satan's Castle, and it's a no from me. Satan's Castle sits on a mountainous region that is filled with both religious and satanic lore dating back to the 19th century. There are said to be underground tunnels linking to various points of interest across the mountain, which were used during the Prohibition era. These tunnels were created mostly for transportation and smuggling booze, but also served for darker purposes. Purposes. One of these tunnels is rumored to connect a Catholic church to Satan's castle. It is said to have been the grounds for dark ritualistic practices, which included both human and animal sacrifices, along with other dark ceremonies. Not to mention, inside one of the rooms, a pentagram used to be painted on the ground. Local Christians painted over it with the John 3:16 verse, but the pentagram always bled through. Definitely sounds satanic to me, and I will not be visiting there. Number 9. Preston Castle, Ione The Preston School of Industry, also known as Preston Castle, was a reform school that opened in June 1894 and was considered one of the oldest and best known reform schools in the United States. The boys there grew their own food, raised livestock, and learned farming trades. Additionally, there was a print shop, bakery, and cobbler shop where the boys could learn skills for self-preservation in the real world. The superintendent controlled the life inside the school, and discipline was extreme. Starvation, isolation, and public paddling and lashings, and severe strategies were common at Preston. Now, this school has seen a lot of death. There are 17 men buried on the school grounds because they died there. Samuel Goines had his life ended after attempting to escape from the school. In 1950, Preston's head housekeeper, Anna Corbin, was beaten to death in the school's basement as well, and they never found out who did it. Employees and visitors believe that these young men are still haunting the school, which only closed in 1960, by the way. Those who have toured the grounds since have reported many strange sights and sounds, slamming doors, falling objects, disembodied voices, and ghostly physical contact. Number 8. Camp Pendleton, Area 41, San Diego Camp Pendleton is a coastal marine corpse base with a dark history. This place is divided up into sections, and Area 41 is haunted. Locks have been tampered with, furniture displaced, items gone missing, and strange noises are heard throughout the camp. Many think that this is done by one broken hearted marine in particular. This man was in love and had recently asked his girlfriend to marry him. After she had said yes, he thought his life was going great, but it didn't last long. The Marine was in his housing unit when his fiance got a hold of him and told him that she was ending the relationship. He was so upset that he ended his life in a second story room of the barracks. Now, some Marines are convinced his spirit remains in the area and haunts Area 41 in particular. A general feeling of unease is common here, and to this day, Marines claim that they hear the faint sound of a man softly humming the Jeopardy game show theme song around the grounds. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Number 7. The Hotel de Coriando, San Diego Hotel de Coriando is a historic hotel that opened in 1888. Kate Morgan has haunted this hotel since 1892, the year she checked in and awaited the arrival of her husband. The two were traveling con artists, and not surprisingly, her husband never showed up, and four days later, Kate was found dead at the bottom of an outdoor staircase leading to the Coronado Beach. Today, those who check into Kate's room Room, which is now room 3312, have had spooky experiences to say the least. Curtains blowing even though the windows are closed, objects moved by unseen hands, murmuring sounds, and even sightings of Kate walking down the hallways and peering out the windows have all been reported. Her ghost is often seen both in the hotel and on the beach. Now room 3519, formerly room 3502, is also haunted. Once a maid's room, it's been the site of numerous paranormal occurrences 
senses, such as objects moving around by themselves. Number 6. The Whaley House, San Diego The Whaley House is the oldest brick structure in Southern California and was the home of Thomas Whaley and his family. At various times, it also housed Whaley's General Store, San Diego's Second County Courthouse, and the first commercial theater in San Diego. The house has witnessed more history than any other building in the city, and it is extremely haunted. One of the most infamous ghosts there is the spirit of Yankee Jim Robinson. Yankee Jim was hanged in the gallows where the house now stands in 1852 after being convicted of stealing horses. Thomas Whaley himself, who owned and lived in the house with his family years later, said they could hear heavy footsteps going up and down the stairs. Now visitors have reported cold spots and the feeling of their chest and throat tightening within the home. Others claim to have seen Yankee Jim 2, an apparition that appears and disappears when you get too close. Today, and for many years, visitors to the house have also reported seeing Thomas. They usually see him wearing a frock coat and pantaloons standing on the second story landing. Others have seen his wife Anna, usually floating around in the garden or the downstairs room. Her ghost, which appears white and billowy, seems to just drift about and then disappears. Number Number 5. Winchester Mystery House, San Jose Now after finding out what this place is, I really want to visit here. I mean just by the name Mystery House, it's cool. Now some backstory on the house, Sarah Winchester lived a tragic yet interesting life. She married William Wirt Winchester in 1862 who was a very wealthy man. Sadly though, her husband, mother, and father-in-law all passed away within the same year. To deal with her grief, she moved to California after gaining a large inheritance from her husband. Then on top of all of that, Sarah was being haunted by the spirits of those whose lives were ended by the Winchester rifle which her husband's company had invented. After her husband passed away, a psychic told her to evade the spirits, she would need to move out west, buy a home, and build non-stop. She took 36 years to construct the home, and this house has 6 kitchens, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 17 chimneys, 160 rooms, and many doors and stairs that lead to nowhere. Workers and visitors swear they hear howling at night, loud creaking, and sometimes the kitchen smells like someone is actively cooking. But regardless if you believe in ghosts or not, the house is absolutely stunning. Number 3. Alcatraz, San Francisco Bay The famous maximum security prison Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary earned a reputation as one of the most brutal and inhumane prisons in the country during its day. The strong currents around the island and cold water temperatures made escape nearly impossible, and the prison became one of the most notorious in American history. The prison closed in 1963, and the island Island is now a major tourist attraction. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 escape attempts, 23 were caught alive, 6 had their lives ended by guards during their escape, 2 drowned, and 5 are listed as missing and presumed drowned. Now, During its 29 years in use, Alcatraz held some of the most notorious American criminals, including Al Capone, George Machine Gun Kelly, and Bumpty Johnson. Today, it's a tourist attraction that many believe to be haunted. Inexplicable events happen Happen, like the sound of someone playing the banjo. Many believe this to be the spirit of Al Capone who spent his last days at the prison playing a banjo in the shower room to avoid being injured in the yard. The smell of smoke, the sounds of cell doors slamming, disembodied voices, moaning, and screams have also all been reported. Number 2. Queen Mary, Long Beach Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. She sailed to the port of Long Beach, California, where she is permanently docked. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction, featuring restaurants, a museum, and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. There are resident spirits, including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter, who was crushed by a watertight door, senior second officer William Eric Stark, who accidentally drank dry cleaning fluid instead of gin, and the cook, who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But most arguably, the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is room B340. Reports claim someone was knocking on the door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turning on by themselves, the sink faucet turning on and off on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have reported the covers of their bed being 
pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. There are even more stories about this place, but I don't have enough time to fit them all in. If you're really interested in Queen Mary, I say do some homework on it because it definitely gets creepier. And coming in at number one is the Cecil Hotel, Los Angeles. The Cecil Hotel opened in 1925 as a well furnished hostelry frequented by respectable people, but that didn't last long. As downtown became more and more dangerous, the Cecil became a place where bad people stayed, like the Night Stalker, aka Richard Ramirez, and Austrian killer Jack Underweger spent time there. The Black Dahlia was rumored to have had her last drink at the hotel bar before she turned up dead a few miles away. In 1962, Pauline Otten jumped from the ninth floor window, ending her life. That same year, Julia Moore jumped from an eighth floor window, and Helen Green from the seventh floor in 1954. The Cecil Hotel may have rebranded itself recently as the Stay on Main, but it just can't shake its reputation as a place where scary things happen. In 2013, the body of Canadian tourist Elisa Lamb was found in the hotel's rooftop cistern. Her body was discovered by a hotel maintenance worker investigating complaints of flooding and low water pressure. And yes, people had been showering in and drinking that water. Ugh. And last but not least, the ghost of a boy has reportedly been photographed outside a fourth floor window. Spooky. <laughs>